Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, my journey started back in 1992. I was born in Sunnybank Private Hospital to a predominantly somewhat non-observing Roman Catholic family. My uh, siblings were also born in the same hospital and we were eventually uh, raised about an hour south in a town called the Gold Coast. Um, my early childhood religion uh, was somewhat reserved for um, Christmas and Lent and Easter, the main Christian holidays uh, and nightly prayers, but um, it never really went further than that. Um, as I got a bit older, I found myself somewhat still, um, you know, holding on to some of the core Christian um, practices, you know, love thy neighbor, etc., etc. But the belief concept kind of drifted from me. I found a lot of the um, the issues regarding or the, the beliefs regarding the divine um, as somewhat irrational. And so as I got a bit older, I started to identify as uh, agnostic. Because at the end of the day, I just didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. So I was trying to be honest to myself. Um, so I identified as that. When I got a bit older, now to my late teens, um, I had a group of friends that would often meet up with each other and uh, just to hang out, do the things that we did. Uh, when we would meet, uh, we would discuss certain matters or our different, different backgrounds and etc. With a very open mind, we had kids from Christian backgrounds, um, Muslim backgrounds, there was a Sunni and a Shia, uh, we had a Buddhist in the group, um, kids who came from somewhat atheist families, all, all different types. And the discussions were always healthy. We had a lot of respect for each other as individuals, that we didn't allow for our differing views to really affect each other. We try to see the similarities amongst them to try to... It wasn't even to try to, we just looked at the similarities and worked on that. What we differed on, we didn't see as a really big problem because we were there to be friends and to support each other and etc. And that's, we didn't look anything, uh, we didn't think of anything else of it. But um, I think it was around, I think it was my 20th birthday or maybe my, um, yeah, I think my 20th birthday, I left Queensland and moved to the other side of the country, um, to Western Australia. These are two different states, by the way. There's about a six hour plane, five to six hour plane ride between the two. And, um, Whilst I was gone, I found out that that group, as well as many other groups that I would associate with when I was younger, um, they all somewhat disbanded or people hung out less um, with each other in the same kind of groups um, than when I was there. Uh, upon my return, I found that a lot of uh, kids had gotten themselves into trouble more so than what they were before. Um, some of my really close friends, uh, some had passed, uh, some had found themselves with drug addictions or you know, substance addictions of other sorts, um, or incarcerated, or with major health issues. There's, he, just, everyone had problems, you know, and the ones that didn't, didn't really have anything to do with the ones that did as much anymore. Um, when I did come back, though, one thing that was really um, that really was different to everything else was my Sunni Muslim friend from the group that I mentioned before. He started becoming more observing in his faith. He went from wearing jeans and shirt and 
whatever else that he would do to wearing a thalb and the kufi and etc. And for me seeing that, I applauded him and I was, you know, the rest of the group did as well because we saw um, what he was doing was a way to not end up like everyone else. He honestly thought what he was doing was the right thing to do and we respected that. No one else wanted him to go down the path that everyone else was going. Um, but one thing became um, very clear, his mentality that he had before had gone from somewhat open-minded um, as, as well as the chats that we would have, they had gone from being very open-minded and respectful to being, um, when he would speak, it would somewhat be aggressive um, and very narrow-minded. One example was he came over to have tea with uh, my mother and I, and uh, while sitting there, we would be talking about Islam and his previous um, responses to, you know, questions about, you know, or differences, uh, questions about our differences would be, okay, well, you believe in this, well, we believe in this, blah, blah, blah. But that had gone to, no, so you believe in this, but it's wrong. What God actually wants you to do is this, this, this. So that was quite alarming to us. Um, especially my mother, but uh, I didn't really think too much of it. I let, kind of pushed it to the side um, and let it be. Uh, he was still my friend. I saw him as a brother and uh, yeah, that was about it. I left it at that. Later on, maybe a few months later, I was doing a renovation job on my paternal grandfather's home with my father. And once we finished, we decided to go down the road to a new cafe that I opened up just to get a, for me, a hot chocolate and for my father a coffee before we left to go back to the Gold Coast. We were in Brisbane at the time. And uh, once I was in there, I started talking to the guy behind the counter who turned out to be the um, apparent owner. And we were talking, 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 and I found out that he was um, a Sunni Muslim. He went, I asked him if he went to a local masjid. He said yes, so I started dropping some names to see if he knew those guys that went there. Once I mentioned my previously mentioned um, Sunni Muslim friend's name, his eyes lit up. He was very excited. And he said, Wallah brother, he's such a good kid. You know him? He's a good kid, blah, blah, blah. I told him that my friend had progressively become um, more observing in his faith. He was also saying some things that were very different to what he would he previously thought. I also mentioned that, you know, he had discussed his uh, lack of approval for what was going on in Syria and, you know, wanting to do something about, you know, potentially going over there to help. Once I said that, the man behind the counter lit up more so than before and he said, Wallah, brother. If your friend ever wants to go to Syria, I'll look after him. He'll look after his family. I'll never have to worry about anything ever again. And upon hearing this, I knew this man was not someone that anyone should have anything to do with. I tried calling my friend as soon as I left. He wouldn't answer. I texted him, um, telling him never to speak to this man from this cafe. Um, but I never got a reply. Uh, sometime later, I, I left... Queensland um, and went to go work up north in Northern Australia. Um, whilst I was up there, I had a night off work and uh, my mother called me up uh, frantically um, saying that she had heard um, my friend's name mentioned in the news. They were showing images of what was reportedly him but she said he looked very different. He had a beard, he was wearing a robe, and she just didn't, she couldn't put the two together. I asked her to send me an image from the TV um, of this um, news report, 
um, she did, and it was in fact my friend. Uh, he was arrested, from memory, he was arrested on uh, suspicion that he was involved in uh, a terrorist plot. Uh, he was also um, the man from behind the counter I mentioned earlier. He was also arrested along with his brother um, for being involved in the same alleged terror plot. Um, and yeah, upon hearing this, uh, I was obviously shocked, um, as were a lot of my friends. I remember writing a Facebook status about it, talking about how we find a lot of these young men uh, who find themselves in you know, such uh, terrorist groups or criminal gangs, you know, they're, all, they're all the same. Whether you're a baiki, a jihadi, you know, a takfiri jihadi, or whatever else, a lot of these guys prey on the young and those who lack guidance. And that's exactly what happened to my friend. Um, I made a post about it. Um, my friends from that same group showed support. Everyone else didn't get it, and rightfully so. You know, I mean, you hear about someone plotting to do what this young man was plotting to do with these older men, and I 100% respect someone not wanting anything to do with that, um, which I have now grown to have the same opinion. But I showed my support for him as a friend in the sense that I hope, you know, he sees what he was, was, what he was doing was wrong and etc. And um, I still have not spoken to him since and it's been a few years now. And uh, anyway, so after this um, event happened, I also found out about another kid from uh, my hometown or where I grew up on the Gold Coast um, who went to, who actually did go to Syria and found herself uh, murdered. Uh, by ISIS, um, despite you know reportedly being on the same side as ISIS, um, and after this, I eventually moved from up north and back home. Not much had changed. People were still doing the same stuff they were doing that they were doing before. Um, there's not a lot of progression on the Gold Coast. Um, from what I've seen. And it's not just the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast is very, very bad for this. But you see it all across Australia. Um, a constant, a rapid decline in morality and uh, a lot of drug abuse and uh, kids are just screwed. A lot of kids are screwed. Not all of them. A lot of kids are doing fantastic. But the youth are a, a serious threat of being um, sent the wrong way, even more so than ever before, with such accessibility to information and uh, drugs and etc. But that's a different topic. Regarding Islam, I got annoyed with it always being mentioned in the news. I got annoyed with the fact that kids from my hometown were either dead or incarcerated because of this, at the time, what I saw as an ideology that could not fit with Western values. So I grew somewhat of a disdain for it. I took it upon myself. I said, look, I'm going to be fair. I'm going to start studying this. Um, I already owned a Quran. I actually had a Quran from when I was younger that I read. Um, but when I read it, I read it as I would have read the Bible as a kid as well, just I saw it as a bunch of parables. I never really tried to understand it. Um, so I started studying it again, and it didn't take me long um, to realize that what um, when I was when when I was reading it, I had to read it as one of these kids. I had to read it as if I was reading the truth because that's what they see it as. So I started again. This time also, I tried to avoid logical fallacies as much as I could when I was making my conclusions. So I did so. And eventually I found myself quite shocked because this thing that I grew to hate wasn't, my hate wasn't really justified. 
it was understandable given all my experiences and I can understand why many people have a horrible view of Islam is because many people portray it in a horrible um, manner. But once I actually studied it and gave it the respect that any ideology should be given when first um, studying it objectively, I realized that this thing was the closest thing to what could have been the truth to me than I'd ever read. So I had come to this, this conclusion. So I started studying other religions. And when I studied all these other religions, I just couldn't get the same out of them that I could with uh, Islam and its scriptures. So I eventually found myself becoming a Muslim. I started off as a Qurani Muslim, mostly because the narrations that I would find, um, the ahadith, which Quranis reject, um, in predominantly the Sunni works, um, I just found so far away from uh, being humane or having anything to do with the Quran itself. Um, but I took it upon myself to start learning some of the Sunni madhabs, or at least one of them, so I could start praying with other people. If you've ever seen a Qurani pray, many of them don't pray in the way that traditionalists do. So I didn't want to be uh, singled out and ostracized for being different. So I took it upon myself to learn the fiqh of the Hanafi school as much as I could. But when I started doing that, I had to take on hadiths. So I started looking at a few of the different madhabs and I also thought it'd be fair to look at the um, Shia schools of thought as well. And upon studying the Twelver school of thought, I found that to be the most consistent ideology that, they, that I've ever studied. Um, I always try to keep an open mind um, when studying everything. I try to avoid logical fallacies in, when rationalizing as much as I can. Um, or at least uh, avoid them when aware of them. Um, but this, uh, this ideology, um, it really resonated with what I found in the Quran. It also really resonated with the, the beliefs that I had, not the beliefs, but the fundamental values that I had as a kid and I, was, I grew up with. Um, if you look at, you know, any group of people today who identify with a certain ideology, you can't identify, you can't, um, what should I say, you can't uh, hold the, you can't blame the ideology or judge the ideology based on what its alleged adherents do. Um, so, you know, when a Muslim says, you know, ISIS are not Islam because, you know, what they're doing is thing, but ISIS still says they're Muslim, you know, we don't expect people to judge Islam based on ISIS. Likewise, I try to do the same with uh, the Twelver school of thought. And it's the Twelver books and alongside the Quran, I just find uh, to be the, if not the truth, the closest thing to the truth. And I say that objectively as possible. Um, so, you know, I, I was a Qurani. Not long later, I became a uh, Twelver. I originally believed in the whole concept of the Rashidun Caliphate, um, but saw the inconsistencies within this concept. Um, and a lot of the history that a majority of Muslims believe in um, which also many Qur'anis believe in. Despite many traditionalists not seeing Qur'anis as being Muslim, they have a very similar understanding of history fundamentally as the traditionalists do in regards to you know, the rightful caliphates and etc. They just reject the concept of hadith and whatever. Um, 
now that I'm a 12 uh, I'm taking it upon myself um, to really make learn as much as I can, continue learning, continue learning. But also I feel that it's necessary for people to see what I saw and how I came to the conclusions that I came to. Um, this is why I support the Bayat al Qariyab channel um, fundamentally. We see a lot of problems in other schools of thought which have affected this school of thought and other schools of thought um, as well as non-Muslims and it affected them greatly. Um, not even just what people do, it's just what the scriptures say. And when I refer to scriptures, I'm referring to a hadith and tafsirs from these schools of thought. Um, I love what the Bayat al Khadir channel is doing. I think it's fantastic what uh, Shia Blade Runner is doing. I think it's fantastic. And now we finally have got discourse going on in the West where people can finally, you know, look at these different schools. You know, we have so many varying schools of thought that fall underneath the Islamic umbrella, which you know, should be given um, due respect in the sense that they exist. Let's assess them and figure out what makes sense and what doesn't. Um, I wish the team the best of luck. I hopefully will be doing some videos for the boys um, soon, inshallah. And um, uh, yeah, anyway, if anyone has any questions or whatever, feel free to message the video if you want contact information for me um, regard if you want to know more about my personal journey if you're um, looking into Islam or you've just came to Islam and you want to know um, more about how I got to where I am or you know you have maybe some advice for me or whatever I'm more than welcome to take it um, but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see or at least listen to it <laughs> um, but yeah anyway that's um, my story of how I got to where I am today. And uh, thank you for listening. Um, Masalama.